Liturgy of the Hours, where we pray the Psalms, and they are uh, a preparation for and a continuation of, like the Eucharistic sacrifice, and uh, they find a place in, in relationship to the other sacraments. So liturgy, the Catechism begins in this section to define liturgy as uh, a work that God does on behalf of his people. It, and so when we speak about liturgy, it's more about what God has done for his people and about my ability to enter into, because I'm baptized, our lay people baptized, have a capacity to enter into uh, the mystery of Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection. And so good liturgy uh, really is uh, the ability for a head and body acting together Christ the head, now glorified in heaven, with his body, the church, through his minister, the two working together uh, to effect the liturgy, and all those members of the body to be able to be disposed to participate in. In fact, the Catechism of the Catholic Church expounds in a profound way, uh, not only, say, who celebrates each sacrament and, in, uh, and who can receive the sacrament and uh, the fruits of the sacrament, but how we might enter more deeply with better disposition into the various sacraments and the sacraments that give a character or a lasting consecration in our soul, how we might live out those sacraments day in and day out uh, so that we might become holy and that we might be able to give render greater honor to God and service to the church and it fulfilled its obligation in the world to bring Christ's grace and life to others. And so this uh, a section of the Catechism begins with treating liturgy and the church uh, working along with Christ ahead and the mystery of the Trinity in the sacraments and then how the sacraments are celebrated, when the different liturgical seasons, the different times in respect of the, uh, the, 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 the year. And uh, we have beginning with Advent, uh, we use the Old Testament prophecies and we kind of relive that looking forward of uh, Israel's longing for the Messiah, and then celebrating of the incarnation with Christmas, and then those early uh, hidden mysteries of Jesus' life, and then the church moving on to uh, celebrate uh, the, uh, the ordinary time or Jesus' baptism of the Lord and beginning of public ministry, and then uh, the uh, growing animosity and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and divisions uh, in the three-year uh, after his uh, public ministry, those public mysteries, and then we uh, look to a preparation for, for uh, in our Lenten season for the Paschal mystery, and then Jesus' death and resurrection, his appearances, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we see the life of the church, and then making full cycle. So we see the uh, year, the church's year, how the liturgy is uh, colored by these seasons and is, is occurring at the various times in our, uh, in our life and in, uh, in time. So we see that in that first section uh, of our part two of the Catechism. And then part two has a second section, which is the main section, which is basically a, uh, uh, expounding upon the seven sacraments of the church. Baptism, uh, baptism, confirmation, and Holy Eucharist, these three sacraments forming, uh, as it were, a trilogy of the sacraments of initiation. That baptism is that door of entrance into the church, and it's a point in which we become adopted sons uh, of, our, uh, of our blessed Lord and uh, brothers and sisters of Jesus. So we become members of the church, heirs of God, and we receive uh, the infused virtue, sanctifying grace. And then speaking about the obligations of being baptized. Not only is it a gift, but it's a task. I have to pursue sanctity. And then uh, uh, the uh, confirmation, uh, perfecting that, and the Eucharist, uh, receiving Jesus in, uh, in Holy Communion, and being present at the sacrifice, offering my joys and sorrows, being able to be with him in the presence. Then taking the sacraments, we say sacraments of service, holy orders, and uh, the sacrament of marriage to serve the church, whether it be in the ministerial priesthood, uh, by bringing Christ and, and his actions, making them present in the church down the, down the centuries, uh, like my own vocation, or be married life, uh, uh, married uh, to, to make present Christ's love for his spouse, the church. And then, of course, that middle section, the sacraments of healing, a uh, sacrament of reconciliation and penance, going to confession, because we do sin after baptism, and we have daily sins that we should bring to the sacrament of reconciliation often. And during this uh, month of December, we have the light is on for you, so we have confessions in every church parish throughout the diocese on the three Wednesdays, uh, from 6.30 to 8 throughout Advent, 
and an opp opportune time to be renewed uh, in sanctifying life and the graces we need to be holy. And then that sacrament of anointing of the sick, when someone is seriously ill or perhaps in danger of death because of frailty, old age, they receive what James says in chapter 5, call for the priests of the church, let them pray over them, anoint them. And so uh, speaking powerfully about the conditions for that, but the effect of the sacrament of anointing. So the Catechism of the Catholic Church in this second section, second major pillar, treats the sacraments of our faith, celebrating the faith that we profess. Next time, let's look at living that faith that we believe and celebrate. Thank you, Father Sean Pine. Coming up next, in a conversation with Bishop Michael Gerald, Monsignor Richard Green interviews Bishop Gerald about the ongoing USCCB meetings. Good morning and thanks for tuning in for another conversation with Bishop Michael Jarrell of the Catholic Diocese of Lafayette. Bishop, good to be with you. It's good to be here with you and with everybody in our viewing audience as well. The United States Catholic Conference, or Conference of Catholic Bishops, I should say, will hold its general meeting this week, November 12th through the 15th in Baltimore. Bishop, what's on the agenda this year? Well, of course, a number of internal items for the conference itself, like election of uh, committee chairs and so forth. However, that will be, we will be addressing two important pastoral challenges, things that will have effect uh, in the parishes and on the parishioners in the United States. First is a discussion on a statement entitled, Preaching the Mystery of Faith, the Sunday Homily. And of course, we know that this is a uh, a very important part of Catholic life and the bishops want to give it some attention. And the second thing is discussion on encouraging the faithful uh, to return to the sacrament of penance. Okay. Well, I see. Well, these are two important challenges uh, with regard to preaching. Let's start with that. We see in the press some dissatisfaction with Catholic preaching. What do you think? I think a number of things. I think, first of all, preaching is a very difficult task. Um, and we have to, to realize that it's not the easiest thing in the world to give really effective homilies. Uh, second thing is that there are very high expectations on the part of the uh, laity, and this of course is proper, but at the same time it should be acknowledged that expectations run rather high. And another thing that's related to that is what I have observed is that people have different expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, some people like a homily with a lot of history in it and a lot of facts. Uh, some like uh, a very emotional and challenging homily. So there are different expectations on the part of, of uh, parishioners and therefore it's impossible to meet everyone's expectations. And another thing I think is that uh, from the point of view of a bishop is that um, I have to give constant encouragement uh, to our priests and deacons uh, to prepare good homilies, to spend time on them, to give them some thought, and to always be trying to improve uh, their skills. So these are some of the things on the bishop's mind. Okay. Well, bishop, on the second challenge, what about uh, thoughts on the sacrament of penance? Well, it's interesting about the sacrament of penance, uh, if we look back over the last 50 years or so, that after the Second Vatican Council, which began 50 years ago this year, um, shortly following the Council, there seemed to be a dramatic decline uh, in people going to confession or making use of the sacrament of penance. And I think there is some history to it from what I can gather from my own experience is that um, going back before the Council, there was a poor catechesis on the sacrament of penance. In other words, people your age and mine were taught that each time we went to Holy Communion, we had to receive, uh, we had to go to confession before each reception of Holy Communion. And the reason I call that poor catechesis is that it was never the teaching of the church. So around the time of the Second Vatican Council, priests began to realize this and began to inform people of the actual teaching of the church, and that is that we must go to confession when there's 
mortal sin, mm -hmm. a serious sin involved. And uh, once this began to be talked about, uh, people began to go to confession uh, less and less. So that there's been a decline in the use. But I think the challenge now is to present to people the spiritual benefits. So to put the sacrament of penance not in the light of this is a bad thing, a negative thing, an unpleasant thing that you have to do, but rather to make it this is one way of receiving God's grace and of growing closer to God and of becoming better in your own life. In other words, presenting the positive benefits. Yes. So I think that's part of our challenge now. And I think it's interesting to note also that there is more appreciation of the sacrament of penance among our young people. Uh, those who take part in church activities and uh, who are given instruction, attend Catholic schools perhaps, um, there is more appreciation for the sacrament of penance. So I think there are some very hopeful signs. Okay. Well, Bishop, uh, what else will the American bishops discuss in Baltimore? We will discuss uh, the evaluation. Uh, the bishops will be asked to evaluate uh, the reception of the New Roman Missal, the new translation, and how well it's going over in the parishes. And also, I think we're going to spend some time discussing the election results and the challenge of religious liberty that we have heard so much about. So there'll be some of that now, maybe an executive session, but um, I think we will be discussing okay. it. And uh, what do you think? About the reception mm -hmm. of the Roman Missal? Well, I think that um, I have talked with a number of priests. Most agree that it has gone smoothly, um, that the people have been very cooperative, that it's good that we had extensive time and gave attention to our preparation, uh, but that some of the priests are still struggling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and anecdotal evidence is that in some dioceses that did not do preparation, uh, that it's been a very more, much more difficult process. But mm -hmm. here, it seems to have gone relatively smoothly. But I think it's too soon to really evaluate. And Bishop, I'm sure there'll be other topics discussed. Anything stand out? Yes, I'm very interested in the discussion about submitting the cause for canonization for Dorothy Day. Uh, many of our listeners know Dorothy Day, how she was very dedicated to the poor. Uh, she's an American. And uh, it will be interesting to hear a discussion about her life. So, well, Bishop, have a safe trip, and I hope it's a very fruitful meeting. And thank you for joining us. Thank you, Bishop Gerald and Monsignor Green. If you have any questions for Bishop Gerald to answer in the segment, A Conversation with Bishop Michael Gerald, please write to Bishop Michael Gerald, 1408 Carmel Drive, Lafayette, Louisiana, 70501. Bishop Gerald is always eager to share the Catholic faith with everyone. We pray this program has allowed you to grow closer to God and the Catholic faith. Join us next week for another conversation with Bishop Michael Gerald for what it means to be Catholic with Father Michael Champagne and Trista Latea interviews vocation director Father Kevin Bordelon about vocations to the priesthood. We hope you've enjoyed our program because it is produced for you. So please join us next week on this station as we tell the people about the Diocese of Lafayette and the good news of our Catholic faith. Mm -hmm.